This video is part of a series of videos focusing on the character relationship moments on screen between Yaz and the 13th Doctor. If you'd like to start at the beginning, click the link in the corner. Otherwise, welcome to the next video. While it appears on the surface as yet another typical adventure story, a close reading of Episode 6, Praxius, reveals a significant shift for Yaz, both in her willingness to take charge on her own and in the level of trust that the Doctor extends to her. There are three hot spots of activity on Earth, so the Doctor splits the team up. Ryan goes alone to Peru, the Doctor goes alone to Madagascar, and Yaz goes to Hong Kong with Graham. What the hell's all this? Exactly what we've been looking for. Yaz takes naturally to leadership when she is on her own. In fact, she gets to step into the role of the Doctor a bit in this episode, similarly to what Clara got to do in Flatline with the 12th Doctor. I'm the Doctor. Don't you dare. Doctor Oswald. <clears throat> You can call me Clara. What are you a doctor of? Of lies. Well, I'm usually quite vague about that. I think I just picked the title because it makes me sound important. My doctor knows what you are hilarious. Can we get back to work, do you think? Clara steps into the role for different reasons, though, even being accused by the 12th doctor of going native. Yeah, well, how is you today? How is the doctor? Lovely. And apparently, I was quite good at it. You heard that, did you? Yeah, but the power was going off, so I suppose you were delirious. You didn't know what you were saying. Yes. Why can't you say it? I was the doctor, and I was good. You were an exceptional doctor, Clara. Thank you. Goodness had nothing to do with it. Clara pursues a sense of grandeur that she associates with being the Doctor. Clara wants to feel important, which is what she imagines being the Doctor is like. Yaz pursues the role because she wants to make a difference, wants to improve people's lives, wants to make things better. She's much more altruistic about it than Clara. I told you he was here. I'm gonna get this stuff off. Wait! Not until we know what all this stuff is doing. No, Yaz is right. You can't just go blundering in. You could end up killing him. How long is that going to take? We've been in this room as long as you. Yaz makes decisions about the direction of the mission. She now knows enough to be able to assess a situation and decide what is the best course of action. And she knows how to make a drastically different choice when the situation changes. While Yaz was not in control during Spyfall when she was taken by the Kasavan, in this episode she seems to be much more grounded with a less naive understanding of what is really at stake at any given moment. Yaz also knows when she is ready to do even more, when she is ready to be on her own without the safety of having the Doctor within arm's reach. Come on, Yaz! No. It's all right. Yaz needs to push herself at this specific moment. Yes, it's dangerous to return into the warehouse alone, but she instinctively knows there's something important in there, and she thinks she can get it. There was a device in there. I couldn't get it free in time. It looked really important to them. I want to go back and get it. Yaz is not 100% sure of herself. She wants and needs the doctor's approval to do this on her own. She also has to convince the doctor that she is not acting recklessly. We don't have enough time. You go. Come back for me in, well, I don't know, an hour or something. The doctor tries to talk her down, but Yaz needs to finish what she was doing in the warehouse, and she needs to face up to her fear and the ever-present danger, and to succeed. It's too dangerous. We need to know why Adam was taken there and what they did to him, and how this is all connected to those other events. One hour. The doctor doesn't know what Yaz saw or what might be important, so letting her go on her own is a huge extension of trust. I suspect the doctor also wants Yaz to become this person that she sees emerging, the person she is developing deeper affection for. 
The parting moment also extends the tension with a lingering look from the doctor to encapsulate everything. One could read so much into this tiny moment. I'm going to settle on, I trust you to be safe on your own, but I also care too much about you to risk losing you. Even more than that, I want to keep going on adventures with this person. True to form, Yaz even gets her own companion. I'll come with you. I'm more than ready to fight something. Hey, I'm Gabriela. You must be Yaz. Yaz gets to answer all the questions that a new companion typically asks. Is that what we came for? Yeah. Okay, so let's get out of here. It's connected into the systems. I want to see what I can find. What's he doing? Where did it go? What did it just do? It's a teleport station. We could follow it. Are you crazy? But making some of those hard decisions with so many unknowns is still difficult for Yaz. You really want to follow that creature? We're seriously going to do this? Yeah. Without knowing where we're going? Yeah. Yaz is weighing all of her options because she knows there's always a strong possibility that she could end up somewhere like the Kasavan Otherworld, and the trauma of that moment is still with her. What's the worst place we could end up? Long list. You don't want to know. You are crazy. Two girls Roman. Ready? But she finds her resolve, using this moment to metaphorically take Gabriella's hand and invite her into Yaz's world and experiences. Yaz is continuing the Doctor's legacy of introducing new people into the mysteries of the universe and all the joys of adventure. We're still alive. We didn't die. What do you think this is? Some sort of alien colony. Look at all this stuff. If we're on an alien planet, then what is that? That is part of a submarine. Of course, Yaz gets excited about the possibility of teleporting to an alien planet, but she gets let down when she later discovers she is still on Earth. What are you looking like that for? I thought I discovered an alien planet on my own. The doctor also gets to express her feelings for Yaz, indirectly and through concern for her well-being. Yes, found you. Thanks for coming to get us. Eventually. Look at you going off on your own and not getting killed. It's a compliment, yes, but it's also a bit passive-aggressive because the doctor is holding back the fact that she didn't want Yaz to go off by herself, that she's worried about her, and about how much she cares for Yaz. She's actually relieved that Yaz is safe. Yaz steps up even more to take charge on her own. She leads Graham and Jake through the Hong Kong warehouse, discovers Adam, the lost astronaut, and an alien control center. Then she gets to be her own version of the Doctor, complete with companion Gabriella. The Doctor is reluctant to let Yaz go on her own, but also extends trust to her friend to forge her own path and become the person she was meant to be, the person the Doctor is going to fall in love with. I'll see you next time as we continue to parse out relationship moments between Yaz and the 13th Doctor in the following episodes. Click the link in the corner for the next video, or find links in the description to all parts of the series.